Hello viewers and warm wishes from us at ITTV. How are you doing? I hope that you're ready to start a new lesson again with me. This lesson is a continuation of chapter 1, which is functions in the Form 4 Additional Mathematics syllabus. If you have viewed the previous lesson, you would have known that we were discussing composite functions. And we are still on this topic today because we're going to go more detailed and more in-depth into the topic of composite functions. Determining the image or object of a composite function. As you know viewers, the object is the value from which we started and we apply a function to obtain the image. So this time, we want to discover or we want to uh, investigate what could be the object or what could be the image of a composite function, bearing in mind that a composite function is usually made up of two or more functions. The method that we will be using is usually substitution to answer the questions involving finding objects and images of composite functions. So let's go into our first example. In this example, we are given fx is equal to x plus 2 over x minus 2, where x is not equal to 2, and gx is equal to 3x plus 4. Just a reminder viewers, do you understand why the condition x cannot be equal to 2 must be placed on fx? This is because the denominator has an expression of x minus 2, and if we should ever replace x equals to 2 into the denominator, we're going to get into a lot of trouble because we will have an undefined answer. And so we always place a condition that x cannot be equal to any value that makes the denominator become 0. In this case, x cannot be equal to 2. So what does part A want us to do? Find f of g of 1 and g of f of negative 1. There are two things that we have to do in part A, viewers. Firstly, find the composite functions of f of g and replace the value of x as 1 while we are doing it. And secondly, is to find g of f of negative 1. Part B also tells us to find the value of x if f of g of x is equal to 0. Let's go and discuss this together on the board, viewers. Ready to start, viewers? Well, remember f of x is x plus 2 over x minus 1, and g of x is 3x plus 4. Our first task is to solve f of g for 1. Now, remember, g is the function that needs to be applied first because it's the letter that's closest to the object. So we want to find what is the image for g of 1. g of 1 means that we should replace the x value of 1 into the g function. Let me put it down here as a side working. So g of 1 will be equal to 3 times 1 plus 4, giving us the answer for the image of g1 to be 7. So that's why we are now going to replace 7 into the square brackets. Just like we replaced 1 into the x just now, now we're going to replace 7 into g1. Then what does f of 7 mean? To the function f, the object we should use is 7. So f of 7 means that we should replace 7 into the x of the f function. See that? So that's why we get 9 for 7 plus 2 over 5 for 7 minus 2. That's what we mean when we say replace 7 into the x values of the function of f. Hence, the final answer to conclude properly for f of g1 is equal to 9 over 5. Moving along now to the second task in part A, which is to find g of f for negative 1. Once again, 
do you recall which is the function to apply first? As always, it's the letter that's closest to the object. So what we need to find is G of F negative 1. F negative 1 means that to the function f, the object involved is negative 1. So this should be replaced into our x. Therefore, we see that we get the function of f with negative 1 applied into the x. Okay, take a quick glance back at fx. You can see that fx is equal to x plus 2 over x minus 2. And if you replaced x with negative 1, this is what we will be seeing. So simplifying this produces negative 1 plus 2 is a 1, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So now to the function of g, its object is negative 1 over 3. This means therefore that to the function g, its object is negative 1 over 3. And that's why we will now replace negative 1 over 3 into wherever we find the letter x for the function of g. And so, if I use the function of g, I could prepare the way by putting brackets in place of where I want to write the x because now the x value I want to use is negative 1 over 3. That will give me a value of negative 1 plus 4, hence the answer is 3. So to conclude properly, g of f for negative 1 is equal to the value of 3. We have found the image of the composite function when the object was negative 1. Now, on to part b. It's a slightly different question this time. In part b, we're asked to find the value of x when f of gx is equal to 0. What does this mean, viewers? This means that the, the image is 0 for that composite function and we are asked to find the object, which was x. Since the final product is 0, meaning the final image is 0, we will need to know what is the entire composite function first. Only in that way can we find the value of x, which is the object we are asked to, to find. So let's begin by finding out the function of fg. That means to say, find the composite function's expression. Now, as you know, f of gx means to apply the function of f into gx. And since gx is 3x plus 4, it means that we must apply the function of f to the image of 3x plus 4. What is the function of f? Well, recall that it is x plus 2 over x minus 2. However, the x that we're dealing with in this case is 3x plus 4. And that's why it needs to be written in here. If we then simplify the expressions, we are going to get 3x plus 6 over 3x plus 2. Now that is the final expression for the composite function of f of g. Back to the question, f of g is equal to 0, find the value of x. So let us now equate 3x plus 6 over 3x plus 2 to 0. Notice what happens. We are concerned with 3x plus 6 equals to 0. What happened to 3x plus 2? Not to worry, viewers. When we multiply both sides with 3x plus 2, it disappears from the left and it still becomes a 0 on the right because of the specialness of the value of 0. Multiplying it to anything still remains a 0. Hence, it is only the numerator that's important to solve this question. And the answer for x is negative 2. So the original object of negative 2 produces the image of 0 when the composite function is applied. Let's move on to another more interesting topic on composite functions. This time, what if we had to find the actual individual component functions? 
determining one of the functions in a given composite function. To determine one of the component functions in a composite function when the other one is given, there are two cases to consider. Case 1, we are given f of gx and the function fx. Or case 2, we are given g of fx and the function fx. Therefore, in each case, we have to find the remaining component function, which is gx. Moving to our first example to see how this is done. We are given that fx is equal to 3x plus 2 and f of gx is equal to 1 minus x. Hence, find the function g. Now, beginning with f of x is 3x plus 2, what would be the meaning of f of gx? Well, as you know, f of gx means that we must make gx as the object to the function f. So if we are told that f of gx is equal to 1 minus x, it is always a good idea to put gx into extra brackets so that you remind yourself that this is the object that f sees. So we apply the gx function into the function of f and that's why we will see the working showing us 3 times of gx plus 2 is equal to 1 minus x. Viewers, if you are confused at this point, just take a moment to look back at the working. As you can recall, the function fx is 3x plus 2. So if the object that we're using is gx, the function must become 3 of gx plus 2. And we are also told that the answer is equal to 1 minus x. So if you then rearrange the equation, you will see 3gx is equal to negative x minus 1. How did the minus 1 appear, viewers? That's because we transferred positive 2 from the left over to the right, changing its sign, thereby giving us the result of negative x minus 1. And if that was 3 times of gx, well then, gx will be negative of x plus 1 over 3. We can write the answer in this form because we have extracted the negative sign from both the terms negative x and negative 1, giving us negative of bracket x plus 1 over 3. That's one of the ways that we can use to determine the remaining component function when you're given the other component function and the composite function's expression. But there is a second case involved, so let's move on. In our next example, we are given fx is equal to x minus 3 and g of fx is equal to 2x plus 5. So find the function g. Why don't we discuss this on the board together, viewers? Now viewers, this example is a little more difficult than the previous one, so please bear with me and listen along as I try to explain it to you. We have been given the composite function g of fx is equal to 2x plus 5. However, we know that fx is equal to x minus 3, so if I begin by saying g of fx is 2x plus 5, Recall that g of fx means that the object is x minus 3, meaning to say that the image of fx is x minus 3 and that becomes the object for g. We have a slight problem here. The expression in the object position for g is made up of two terms whereas the function contains x as a single term. So that makes it a bit difficult to work with. It is always a good practice that your object should be a single variable only. So to override this problem, 
we could make use of the technique which I mentioned in the earlier example and that is that we could always use a letter to represent the object. So for example, if I say let y equals to x minus 3, you can choose any other letter that you like. You could change it to m, you could change it to k, it really doesn't matter as long as we're just changing it into a single term. And if y is equal to x minus 3, we might want to find out the expression for x when the need arises. So x is equal to y plus 3. Now with this, we are ready to substitute. As you can see, x minus 3 can be replaced with y and y plus 3 can replace our x. And so that's how we end up with g of y is equal to 2 times of y plus 3 plus 5. Why does this help us, viewers? Because we are now able to get the function of g in terms of a nice expression for a single term object. And in the end, viewers, it really doesn't matter what letter we use, meaning to say, if we had used m instead of y, we would come up with the result g of m is equal to 2m plus 11. If we had used p as our letter, we would have resulted in g of p equals to 2p plus 11. So to answer it finally, let us change back the y into x because our usual expression makes use of the variable x. Changing y back into x will give us g of x is equal to 2x plus 11. And isn't that what we were looking for? We were trying to find the component function gx. So this is our answer viewers. When the function of x is x minus 3 and the composite function is 2x plus 5, the component function gx that is to be determined is 2x plus 11. Well, that's all about composite functions. It's time now to move on to another related topic, which is the inverse function. Inverse functions. In mathematics, an inverse function is a function that undoes the function. What does this mean? Well, as you can see from the diagram, if the function f maps x values to y values, then the inverse function will map the y values to the x values again. And the statement that properly describes it is, if fx equals to y and gy equals to x, then the function g is called the inverse of f, denoted by f with a superscript of negative 1. Observe the diagram, viewers. Function f converts x into y, but the function of inverse f converts y back to x. Or we can write it in mathematical symbols. If fx equals to y, then f negative 1 of y is equal to x. Determine the object by inverse mapping. What does this mean, viewers? It is best described with the example. Given that the function f is f maps x into 3x plus 1 over 2, find the object for the image 9. Let's take a look at how we use the concept of inverse functions to answer this question. This is the situation, viewers. The function of f is 3x plus 1 over 2, meaning to say that the function f maps x into the image of 3x plus 1 over 2, and we've been given the image of 9, so we want to find the object that led to that answer. Now let's say that the object is called a, meaning to say let a be the object that produces the image of 9. So can you see that the inverse function changes 9 back to a but since a is in the object section and 9 is in the image section it also means that if we apply the function of f to object a we should get the answer of 9. 
So we can start from here, viewers. If f of a equals to 9, we simply have to replace a into the function given by f and equate it to 9. So moving along over to here, it therefore means that when f of a is equal to 9, 3 a plus 1 over 2, do you notice how the object is a this time? And that goes into the position of x in the function. Equating it to 9, we'll be able to solve the value of a very shortly. So 3a plus 1 is 9 multiplied by 2. 3a then becomes 17, and a is 17 over 3. Hence, viewers, it means that for the object 17 over 3, the function 3x plus 1 produces the image of 9. Our next slide is a summary of what we've discussed on the board. You will see for yourself how the working is clearly shown to produce the answer for a to be 17 over 3. fx is equal to 3x plus 1 over 2. And as mentioned just now, let a be the object of 9, meaning that 9 is the image and a is to be the object. So f of a equals to 9, hence 3 times a plus 1 over 2 is equal to 9. And simplifying this produces 3a equals to 18 minus 1, giving us the value of a equals to 17 over 3. Hence, 17 over 3 is the object of 9. So that brings us to the end of this lesson, viewers. And to summarize quickly, we have looked at a rather detailed investigation regarding composite functions. And we moved on to inverse functions. More about inverse to come in the next lesson. So till the next lesson, viewers, I look forward to seeing you again. Goodbye from ITTV.